So to our top story, and it's monkeypox, which is spreading, and it would appear, quite fast now. New figures show cases in England have almost tripled since Friday, with the UK Health Security Agency reporting 36 new sufferers on top of the 20 already known about. It's also confirmed that the virus can spread from touching items used by someone who is infected, not just person-to-person -person contact. But the World Health Organization, who also spoke today about the disease, said it believes it is still containable. So, how worried should we all be? First, let's take a look at the current state of the outbreak across Europe. New cases in England take the number of cases here to 57, after Scotland also confirmed their first case earlier today as well. Portugal has the next highest number of cases with 37, and Spain closely follows with 34 confirmed cases. France, Germany, Italy and the Netherlands have now confirmed their cases as well. Belgium has become the first country to introduce mandatory 21-day monkeypox quarantining after they detected their first two cases. Let's get the very latest now, and joining us from the UK Health Security Agency headquarters in central London is Talk TV's Emilia Harper. Hello, Emilia. What have we learned today, then? Well, Tom, we have learned about those 36 new cases in England, and this takes the case number across the UK now to 57, and that accounts for the one new case that was discovered in Scotland today. There have been none so far in Wales or in Northern Ireland. Now, the UK Health Security Agency says while this rise is significant and concerning, they say the risk to the general public is still low. Now, the World Health Organization has said today that this is a containable disease, but, Tom, they still expect to see a significant rise in cases over the coming weeks. And that's because this monkeypox virus has spread from countries where this is endemic, such as in Central and Western Africa, to countries mainly in Europe where it is non-endemic. We have had new guidance today on high-risk contacts, so people who've been in direct close contact with people who have monkeypox. They're being advised to self-isolate for 21 days, three weeks. They also have to offer their contacts for contact tracing purposes. And they also are being offered a smallpox vaccine. Now, what's happening with community transmission? Well, we're seeing new cases every day. And the UK Health Security Agency says a significant proportion of these cases that we are seeing are among gay and bisexual men. Now, Andy Seal, a World Health uh, Organization advisor on HIV, hepatitis and STI programs, warns that the messaging around this needs to be done carefully. Some cases amongst men who have sex with men, this is not a gay disease, as some people in social media have, have attempted to, to label it. That's just not the case. Anybody can, can contract uh, monkeypox um, through, through close contact. Now, Downing Street says that they are concerned about this, but the World Health Organization today has said that this is not a COVID take two situation. Number 10 says they're not going to be having any emergency COBRA meetings on this. They won't be imposing those COVID style travel bans we got used to, Tom. Um, and they also say they are not uh, planning to at scale vaccinate anyone. That said, though, they will be monitoring this carefully in the coming weeks and months. OK, Amelia, thank you. Well, there's a lot we know about monkeypox, but there's also a lot that we still don't know. So how worried should we all be about this new disease? Joining me now is The Times and Science editor, Tom Whipple. Tom, hello. You cover the coronavirus pandemic intrinsically from top to bottom. How does this outbreak compare? And how worried are you? I think the problem is that we're now so primed for coronavirus uh, and so primed for the one virus that we really understand that there's a risk of seeing every other virus through that, that lens. Um, this is a very different virus, a very different kind of outbreak and a very different kind of potential end games. Uh, it's, it's something which is very much more likely to be controllable because of the way it spreads, because of the involvement of person to person and person to surface, but not apparently some sort of strong 
respiratory spread. Um, we still, as you say, there's masses of uncertainty. So we're talking about these case numbers, but of course, a lot of these cases are because we're looking for it now. Uh, a lot of the extra cases are because we're looking at people's contacts where we expect it to spread. So it's very not, much not the situation we have with COVID where we've got this vast surveillance and can sort of understand how it's spreading. I think the real worry for uh, health authorities is not so much that this is going to become some massive nation sweeping uh, pandemic, but rather that it will end up, as you hinted, becoming endemic. That something that never spread here before and was never sustained here before could find its way into a situation where it just remains. Uh, and no one wants to import a new disease, even if it ends up being something that exists in the background. OK, Tom, now we've learned, I suppose, that you can get it by touch, bit sustained touch. I suppose people aren't necessarily going to be too worried about getting it from the tube or uh, a hand on a bus or something. But there are sort of concerns, aren't there, that if monkeypox spreads to animals, it will be impossible to control because you can't find every animal that has it. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, that's what, that's, that is the real concern because... Look, it may have changed hugely, although the genetic evidence doesn't appear to imply that it has. Um, what we know of it in Africa is it doesn't sp spread that well between people, but it does spread into and out of animal reservoirs. And at the moment in Europe, we don't appear to have these animal reservoirs, often things like rodents. Um, but, you know, if it turns out that squirrels end up becoming an animal reservoir from it, then it becomes uneradicable and becomes something that will cause likely periodic outbreaks. And that's, you know, emphatically not what we want. Okay, Tom, for your wisdom as always, thank you.